How to build a Blackgate Sweep B5 inch gauge locomotive, part 9. Dismantling the rear wheels assembly, examining the build quality of the unit, cleaning the parts and carefully machining one end of the axle. I have yet another food container in place to contain all the bits and pieces that I'm taking off this part. They're perfect for this, they're not actually airtight, but they're good for holding small nuts and bolts. The rusty part that you can see on the bench is called a pony truck, or to give it its proper title, a Bissell pony truck. And this is designed to help the locomotive negotiate bends. This particular pony truck is not well made and it's rusty, so I'm going to take it apart to see what needs doing to it. Some parts of this are rustier than others, the wheels are the worst, but this is only surface rust, although the machining of the wheels does leave quite a lot to be desired. The sequence is self-explanatory, I remove the bolts and then I take the part off. And any nuts and bolts go in the food container. As you can see the axle is also very rusty, and the axle boxes are a rattle fit in the guides, I'll have to do something about this. I notice on these wheels there are no centres in them, which you would normally find as they generally turn between centres. The flanges have been left square-ended and this is never a good idea, they need profiling. I'll do this at a later stage using a file, but not in this episode. The wheels are bad enough, this is a lot worse. The axle box is not even a rattle fit between the two guides. I don't know how anyone can make such a mess of a job like this. And once again it leads me to believe that more than one person worked on this engine. The cylinder bores are beautiful and the cylinders are well machined with the exception of the milling of the ports which is a mess. I don't need to make new parts for this. I have to set a standard relative to the quality of the build. An alter in this layout is very simple to do. I'm running the video at four times normal speed just to get through these simple jobs in a reasonable time. The nuts and bolts and any small loose parts are put in the food container. I really am puzzled by this. The axle boxes have been filed and that's correct to allow them to move up and down individually. Some builders make these parts far too tight. These are fine. The problem is with the positioning of the bars that hold the axle boxes in place. Now it's back to a socket set frenzy, removing all the fixings. The last part to go is the gunmetal block, which is the thrust bearing. It's time now for an initial clean up, just to see what I have to play with. All of the loose parts are in the food container, so I think it's a good idea to replace the lid, so I don't lose any of them. These have been quite useful as food containers, but I think they're more used to me for holding bits and pieces. For the initial clean, I'm using some WD-40 squirted on to a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. And this doesn't severely clean the parts, but it gets most of the surface grime off. You will notice that there are two brass strips soft soldered to the bottom plate. When I was at Blackgate's Engineering last week, I bought a book called Build Your Own Steam Locomotive by Jack Buckler, which is all about the construction of a sweet pea, and these strips are not shown on the drawings in there. I think they were fitted to stop the axle box mountings from twisting. I think I'll leave them like that because they obviously do the job. The two uprights at each side cannot rotate because they're up against these two pieces of brass. Before anyone writes in to tell me how to do the job, I need to mention that I'm building this locomotive to a certain standard. It's no good taking a part finished locomotive and remaking every part. I may as well have started from scratch. It's not a sympathetic restoration. I'm going to build the locomotive properly, but it will be slightly unorthodox in certain areas. But it will work and it will work well. Here I'm cutting a raggy edge off a piece of 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper, which I'm folding over for cleaning the wheels once I mount them in the lathe. I do need to mount them in the lathe for a couple of reasons, one being it's not a good idea doing it this way, it will take forever. Over now to the small walkover lathe in the smaller of my two workshops. 
and I'm changing the chuck jaws for outside jaws so I can hold one of the wheels in the chuck. Here you see the arrangement and this holds the wheel very securely. The first thing I need to do is to drill a centre hole in the end of the axle. I'm not going in too deeply, just deep enough to take a live centre. I do actually need to machine the axle on one of these wheels because one of them is flush and the other one sticks out a bit. I'd rather that both of the axles stuck out a bit but that's not going to be the case. The first part of the job is to squirt the parts with WD-40. This acts as a lubricant and makes it possible for the wet to dry sandpaper to cut much better without clogging. Even though this Warco lathe is small it's still quite powerful so I'm being very careful not to get any part of me caught up in the mechanism. In no time at all the surface rust is all removed. When I look closely at the wheel though it's not very well machined, no surprise there. In the next clip you will see that the wheel looks much better because I skimmed it whilst it was in the lathe. Using the thin folded piece of wet dry sandpaper and some WD-40 I'm now cleaning the axle. In this part of the clip I'm using some Scotch Brite which gives a really fine finish. I don't know why I'm bothering though because this axle is too close to the firebox and for that reason I'm going to paint it. One at a time I slid the axle boxes into the centre of the axle so I could clean the edge to remove any rust that was very close to the axle box. I think that will do for now, the axle's looking a whole lot better. I cannot recommend what I'm showing here. I'm actually machining the end of the axle and it's stuck out a long way from the chuck. This means that I can only take extremely fine cuts. If I take a big cut and it digs in, the job will be ruined. I'm making it match the wheel at the other side as well as the rest of the wheels on the locomotive. That was successful, so I turned the axle around in the chuck and now it's time to do exactly the same. First of all, centre drill it, then fit the live centre, followed by a thorough clean up, first of all, with wet or dry sandpaper and WD 40, followed by Scotch Brite. Once I'd finished cleaning up the wheels, I removed the assembly from the lathe, and here I'm cleaning up the paintwork. I'm only doing this just to key it for another coat of paint that I'll be doing shortly. Once again, not in this episode, because that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.